There's one thing is better than me in professional boxing, and that's losing. Yeah. All right. Well, this one's good. We get to chat to Liam Paro, and this time with a world title fight that's going to happen. This is a good one. Welcome to the Punch Podcast. Thanks, mate. Good to see you again. It's always good catching up. Absolutely. And it's always good to see you on a fight poster that says there's a strap involved. Uh, and this one, oh, how does that yeah, feel? It's been a long, been a long time coming, but, um, yeah, we're finally here. Obviously we saw what happened when you went for the WBC, you're out, you're out with injury for a little while, but this one is against a guy who is what we've said, the, the boogeyman, but you're yeah. one of the most confident people on earth. So yeah, you're looking yeah, yeah. good. Oh, I can't wait. And that's what it's all about. You know, um, not only in boxing, but in life, it's about testing yourself and why not? give the ultimate test against the so-called boogeyman. You know, at the end of the day, everyone's saying you're nuts, you're crazy, you got a big set of kahunas. Man, it's, it's not that at all. It's He's another human being, you know what I mean? He breathes the same air, bleeds the same blood. So I'm not in there fighting a robot. So um, he can be hurt, so can I. And I'm just going to show the world what we already know and what I've been proving 24 times before that we're on that world-class level. Um, My last fight, December 9, out of the ring, back-to-back -back injuries for the whole year, come back shut Montana Love out in the sixth round. So I, I'm overweighting now and um, it's my time. And I think this is my destiny. This is how I'm meant to blast onto the scene and yeah, take full control of the 140 pound division. Some hill names up there that are holding straps at the moment. It's actually, yeah, with, yeah. it's probably the biggest star power division without a doubt. That's got, obviously you've got like the, the ones with undefeated and und, um, undisputed. So that's obviously yeah. a little different. But as far as individual belt holders, it's a pretty wild division to be a part of, let alone at the top of. No, for sure. I think it is the the biggest um, division, hottest division, apart from heavyweight and boxing at the moment. Um, man, there's huge names there. And, you know, I've always said I want to knock them down one by one. And why not start with the the most feared guy? And then, um, yeah, line the rest up and I'm coming for everyone. I, I've said this for a long time. And, you know, it's I'm just... Proven, I'm just making this what I've been saying into reality now. So, what do you think they see when they all do call him the boogeyman? That is obviously what they say. There's a lot of he's had a lot of retired fighters on that stool. That's no, that's no secret. And he is obviously a world champion and a very good fighter, as yourself is too. So, who, like, what do you think they're seeing that you're not for them to for you to go, oh, it's not a boogeyman to me, but they're like, well, yeah, he is. No, I think just they're all thinking the high, it's um, high risk, low reward. The guy doesn't have a big, big name yet. Obviously, he is, like in, within boxing, yes, he's not no Devin Haney, not no Ryan Garcia. So, um, I think that's the only thing they see there. And look, it's just man, I've got that old school mentality. I'm a fighter, I fight, and that's what I do. I love being in there. I'm the happiest when I'm in there trading leather with someone else. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm I've always said it like Pyro performs under pressure. The bigger the task, the better I perform. And man, I'm just yeah, I'm I'm just keen. You know, look, it's just the it just excites me. It excites me that the people are running scared from this guy. Um, and that's not my mentality. I mean, that's not in my DNA, you know. If I was running scared, I'd take it. Head, well, I was like, you know what they say, take a bull by the horn. So I'm I'm taking this guy head on. And not only um, people are avoiding him, I'm taking him on in his backyard in his home country. So, man, just let's see what he's all about. That's all it is, you know. Like I said, life's about testing yourself. And it's just the ultimate test. It's my hardest fight. But... Keep proving I'm ready for this, and you will hear those words and the new. That's the ones we want to hear because Australia and world titles right now we're running a little thin, so pressure on. Yep. Um, yep. <laughs> so, and Pyro performs under pressure, so we'll take that that's one. It, too, that's right? it. We look forward to that. Puerto Rico is uh, where you are going. Is this a fight that you knew you were looking to get? Because to me, it feels like a fight that you would have just got a left field call and said, Do you want Matias? It's in Puerto Rico. And you're like, Do it. Or was this the yeah. chance? Oh, look, I always knew we we're going to cross paths sooner or later. I always said anyone with a belt on my radar and um, this guy's got a belt and he's on my radar. So why not? Let's get it. Let's get it on. Um, Look, I didn't know where it was going to be. They just told us the fight's there. You know, Alfie doesn't even have to ask. Obviously he does, but he knows I'll fight anyone. I'm not scared of no one. So I was keen. And when they said it's in Puerto Rico, I said even better. You know, it's just going to be a better chapter in the book when it's all said and done. So Man, that's what that makes a true champion. You know, I'm going to go into this guy's backyard, unfamiliar territory, and take what's mine. Were you training for any other fight? Was there anything else on the cards when this came through that you had to maybe shelve for the world title, or is this? Were you just ready and waiting? 
No, I was just ready and waiting. You know, like I said last year, it was a horrible year with injuries and inactivity. Um, I just wanted to stay active, which I did over the break. And, um, yeah, there was a few names floating around. And as soon as the title come up and and this guy, it was like, because Ryan Garcia, if you'd seen after my last fight, called me out on socials, yeah. try to get that. But it's just a typical chihuahua or bark, no bite. So that faded out pretty quick. But, um, you know, God willing, I get the job done. I'll, I'll get back around to him soon enough. But, um, man, look, it was just, yeah, the opportunity was just massive. And like I said, just the fact that everyone's running scared of this guy just made me more excited to um to go prove that he's only he's only a human being, you know? Like, I know the task ahead of me, it ain't going to be easy, but nothing nothing good comes easy. Does a loss on his record help you with confidence to go, well, look, I'm, if he can do it, so can I? Oh, for sure. You know, there's one thing he's better than me in professional boxing, and that's losing. You know, no disrespect. Numbers don't lie. Um, he did re- uh, avenge that loss. He got it back, but man, he he can be heard. He's it's in fights. It's seen. He's been heard. Um, I'm not gonna have to look for him. He's gonna be right there in my face. You know, um, it's gonna be a fire fight, and I'm just I'm just excited. That's what I really am. I'm excited. This is what it's all about. I've been talking world title contentions since 2020 against Jack Catterall. COVID come through, and you know, I just believe God has a plan and. His timing's right, and now's the perfect time for me. And yeah, I've never been better physically or mentally, and everything happens for a reason. So here I am. And I even think your boxing IQ is growing every time you watch your fight, too. I mean, Montana Love, there was a bit of a piece of a puzzle there you had to solve, and then you did, and yeah. ultimately got it. There was times there where, obviously, as a Paro fan, I, I, I back in, but you go like, oh, it's getting edgy here. And then I just, yeah, I guess we trust in what you do, and you did it. Oh, for sure, for sure. And I knew I said that in interviews previously. I said anyone could be sharp for four rounds, not taking anything away. Montana Love is a superb boxer. He's fast, he's crisp, and um, yeah, like after back to back injuries a year out of the ring, I just knew I had to find my distance by that by round five. I knew it was my fight. Um, but that's all it was, you know, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. We're in there for twelve rounds to figure him out, and that's what I did. And once I start falling in my range and sitting on punches, not many people can um keep up and it's proved my last two fights. Are you seeing those shots in there? Like, obviously, you're setting up the traps, but are you are you seeing those ahead of time going, yep, yep, okay, I see it now, let's see. Um, so look, a with, bit of... with the uppercut, the first thing Alfie said, we didn't even practice that in in camp. I was like, yeah, well, it, it was just there, it was open. And that's like you said, the box, come back to the boxing IQ. You've got to be reading and sussing out what's in front of you the whole time. But as soon as he come up with a high guard and try and push me back, I'm like, this guy can't hit hard enough. He's not strong enough to fight like this. Getting heavy on the front foot, I just spun him off with a hook, and it was just—it was open. It was just I was taking a big scoop of ice cream out of the tub. It was um, it was perfect, and it was, yeah. This, but that's that's the part of evolving as a fighter. Like you said, my IQ is getting better and better. I'm always learning, I'm always studying, and it's those little one percenters that just make you switch on a lot more in the gym and in what's in front of you in the fights. And yeah, I seen the opportunity and took it with both hands. Well, yeah, you've got one hell of a uh, a camp underway. You're, uh, you've obviously been focused since the last one. You'll head over to Puerto Rico at some point. Are you going to Vegas first or uh, what's the plan? No, nah, not this time. We're going to head to um my, Miami on the East Coast over there um, just because the time difference is humidity. You know, the, Vegas is dry heat. So it's all those little things. Like I said, the 1% is you start doing a few of them, they all add up. It's 10, 20%. So we're um, going to finish off camp the last five weeks in Miami. Um, go over to Puerto Rico on fight week. So we're on the same time frame and same similar um climate. Yeah. Well you might have hit Jake Paul up for his gym or something maybe over there. Oh, it still could be open on fight week, you know. If you listen to this Jake Paul, let us yeah, let us train there on fight week, you know, that'd be mad. But we still got connections. Elf talks to um his team and that is a fair bit since the fight. So I'm sure that wouldn't be too hard to um seal. Yeah, that's uh, I've been looking at a bit over there because obviously they had that fight recently with Serrano that obviously her main event didn't go ahead. So I think the fans yeah. are free for a uh, a hell main event over there. I think it's been selling well, sure. really well if not sold out. So it's going to be uh, yeah. a whole crowd for you. Have you faced a crowd that's been completely against you before? Look, um, oh, in a way, a little bit. You know, I've fought on on foreign ground before America a few times. Jake Paul card, for example. Um, Montana loves San Francisco. Look, it's a few times, but like I said, they're not the ones in there fighting. You know what I mean? And they can say what they want. It's just, um, I think the hardest bit's going to be getting out of the ring with that strap after we get it. 
that's going to be the, the hardest thing. But, you know, I'm hoping to win over some Puerto Rican fans. Um, I know I will with my style and the excitement I bring to the ring. It's going to be a fire fight. We both can bang. It's proven in our fights. And, man, it's going to be a f- fucking classic of a fight. I believe it's going to really shape up to be one that's going to be, yeah, written in the history books. Do you think he's overlooking you and just like ticking a box or do you think he's going to go in there genuinely? Like I've got someone that can really take me out here. What What do you think you see Oops. in his vision? Um, just going off of what we see in social media and what you're talking about, like, uh, what people are talking about, it's looks like he's already trying to line up other fights. So I, I pray he is overlooking me. You know, the other guys that have, um, end up peeling themselves off the canvas canvas and trying to pull it together. But when it's too late, but look, I know he's going to, I know the task ahead of me, but I know it's going to be hard. I know we've got the tools, but I want him a hundred percent, you know, um, but going back to, yeah, if he's overlooking me. Well, that's his fault if it, if it, if that happens, you know. We know how the boxing gods work. I have seen some of that floating around where they've been talking about Haney, where he said he was just going to just move through 140, but now he's all looking yeah. at trying to unify it and become undisputed again in another division. He obviously yeah. has been trying to say recently, I mean, he did say that he loved, he said you're a really good fighter and he gives you a lot of credit. Yeah, yeah. He did actually say that. But I think they're all, again, yeah, they're sort of always – and what's going on so you have exactly. that it's, it's to... typical typical americans man and all they are like you just know how they are they just they just think they're the only people in the world and just the way it is you know and i love spoiling parties so that's what i've done the last few times went over there and yeah shut a few mouths so i'm going to continue to do that and like i said it doesn't bother me what people are saying people talk let them talk and i'm just going to keep killing them with um success I've got Matias here who's got a strap that you want and I guess there's other guys there that you do want to take on at some point. Is there a dream fight in that division regardless of belt? Uh, look, not really. I just want to fight the best of the best. I just want to clean the division out and you know, test myself against the very best. That's what it's about. And look, let's be honest, I think the dream fight there is the Devin Haney. So Hopefully by then, if we, if it comes around, you know, like I said, God willing, I've got this task ahead of me. I'll get through that. And, man, imagine that for both of us have a belt, uh, two belts each and um, for the proper unification, that would uh, be a dream come true. And I'd love to share the ring with him in the near future. But, like I said, all we'll focus on Subiel Matias and getting the job done. And Aussie owes him a uh, victory as well. So <laughs> we need to get yeah, a, exactly. a line with Devin Haney. That's for them. Sure, for sure. Be, uh, That'd be good. And uh, look, you've got a, obviously a whole lot planned now. You're in training, you're in camp. Yeah. Where are we at for from here on out before you do take to Miami? Is it still sparring? You're still a fair bit out, really. We've been, we've been sparring already. We've been doing six rounders. So I've been sparring guys like Dan Hill, junior middleweights. Um, we just flew, uh, flew up Jason Fawcett, a good um, good welterweight, very good kid. We've got him up here at the moment. So, man, like I said, I kept fit over the break. So it's week two of camp and I'm already – it's Alex already good trying to have to pull me back, which is a good place to be. So um, everything's good. We always train hard. We've always been the hardest workers in the room, and it shows in my fights. We keep turning the screws, and we just do it right. And like I said, it's just, just yeah, it's fine tuning and set myself up. Um, it's more mentally to uh, know how I'm going to hold myself as a champion. You know, I know things aren't going to change, but I just, I just can't wait. And I think this is truly my time to, yeah, to rule to the division. Yeah, and we look forward to seeing that as well. And I think we've got, obviously, you mentioned Haney and Garcia before. They're coming up soon. Who do you think wins that? Yeah. Haney gets it done? Oh, I, I think Haney does it pretty comfy. But um, look, Garcia can punch and it's boxing. One punch can change it all. So, you know, whoever it is, whoever the winner is, you know, like I said, I get through my fight. I want the winner of that one. So just the way it is, you know, I want the top names. I want to keep proving myself that I'm the top in this division and um, world class, if not world t- uh, champion worthy and yeah I'm just, I'm just keen you know this is this is my time that's all I just I just know it is and like I said before this is my destiny and this is the way I'm meant to win it so I'm excited you've obviously got Pitbull in there too obviously he just got the strap from Rolly in uh, Vegas there yeah. what did you make of that fight because that was that was a good one it was a good fight you know Rolly showed uh, showed hard I've done a lot of work with him over in Vegas um look that's another killer Pitbull's gonna be a hard fight you know, I think he's five three so and a little nugget. So, um, man, it's just the like you said, the division is absolutely stacked, and it's just it's exciting to be a part of it. Not only just be a part of, it, be up there and like uh, you know swapping names with with um these kind of guys. So, 
man, I truly believe if if you can rule this division, you are legit one of, if not the best in boxing today. So it's um it yeah, it just sets high goals and high standards for myself to achieve and yeah, keep making a reality. Well, uh, Matthias is the man that stops you from that destiny and you're there to take that crown and take that strap and uh, be amongst, I would almost be like, this was almost like the, the lightweight division before. I remember when Tio left the lightweight, he's like, yeah, no one's doing 135 anymore. 140 is where it's at. And he was yeah. almost the only yeah. one there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now they're all coming. Exactly. Yeah, right. There. And look, there's, they're all just going to keep coming up. It's just, like yeah. I said, I reckon it's the hottest division in boxing at the moment. You've got big names. You've got Garcia, Haney, Lopez. Man, it's it's stacked and it's perfect for the um for the retirement fund down the track too, for sure. <laughs> Does George stay at 135, do you think? Look, I'm not sure. Maybe. But um, I'm, I'm good friends with George Cambosis and um, I wish him all the best in his up and coming fight. But who knows down the track, man, if, if it makes sense, we, we could have a we could make a mundane green rivalry, you know, down the track. But now we'll keep ticking balance and keep killing it on the world stage. And, yeah, who knows what happens down the track. But like I said, we're good mates. And um, but at the end of the day, it's business. Absolutely. And we uh, want some more Aussies with more world titles. Everyone uh, has been up there at the moment, that's for sure. And you're definitely one yep, of them. Yep. Look forward to seeing that go over with and the new. And, um, oh, yeah. again, always appreciate your time swinging by the Punch podcast. Uh-huh. I'm yet to have a no from you, so that's good. <laughs> no, I always give you, always support people who support me. So, um, yeah, always be there. All right, message to the fans before we go. You got to give them. You got to give them a little something. Oh, I just want to thank everyone that stuck by me. You know, my law supporters, especially in the hard times, the people who stuck by me means the world to me. And um, this next one's all for you guys. There he is, Liam Parra. Appreciate it. Thank you.